Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Excel Video 109. And today what we're going to do is spend a little more time with these spark lines. And I want to show you how groups work, how you can kind of group these spark lines together. There are two different ways to do it. What you can do is let's just create a spark line. Let's just kind of replicate this a little bit or at least start to here. So I'm going to go to the insert menu. I'm going to choose a line, spark line. Where's my data? Well, it's right here. There we go. Click enter and click OK. And if I come back over here, I have a spark line. And then what I'm going to do is I can drag down and copy all those spark lines. And notice what happens when I select the spark line. See how I get this blue line? I get this whole group of spark lines. They're grouped together, kind of like you'd group pictures or group text boxes or in other office programs. You can group these spark lines. The other way you can get a group of spark lines together is to do this. You can say, look, I know I want spark lines here. And then I'm going to go to the Insert menu and Line. And there's the location. You pick your data range like this and say, all right, give me the whole thing. And Excel's smart enough to match up the rows and all that good stuff. So that here's my data range. Here's my location range. I click OK. Come back over here. And I think these are 13 wide. So let's call them width and do 13 so they look, yeah, so they look more or less the same. So when I do that, now what I've got is a group of spark lines. I can get it either way. When you have a group, what you can do is if you go under the design menu, you can ungroup them. Or if you go to the axis, you can make the vertical axis minimum and maximum either automatic for each spark line or the same. Look what happens when you do them the same. I mean, they all look pretty flat because what they're trying to do is chart values that go from you know 900,000 down to maybe 70 or 80,000, maybe in this range. And so, you know, these changes are very minuscule on that scale. So to do that, you know, in that case, you want to do automatic. On the other hand, if you've got data that is a very it's similar uh, value range, what you don't want to do is have an automatic value for each spark line because then what it can do is it, you'll have different scales if it sets it automatically for each individual spark line. You could have numbers that are way out of our spark lines that look way out of whack. If this has its own, say this range is from 76,000 to 77,000, and this is from 100,000 to a million, you know, a small change here may be 100, a small change there may be 100,000. So you got to look and think through which way you want this, whether you want your your vertical axis options to be automatic for each spark line or the same for each spark line to make sure that the spark lines are showing what you want to do. Stay tuned next time we're going to do a little more formatting, a couple of more games with these very same spark lines. Thanks for watching.